happen because it's going to be. Okay, very good. Yes, it's been a little bit hectic here of these last uh, several uh, minutes before the meeting. So, uh, would you like me to read the uh, required hoo ha about meetings, blah, blah, blah? Um, held at. I, th I think we could wave it. I think we've all heard it enough times, but <laughs> we always end up. Think we need to read it. Every every meeting I'm in, we've had to read it. Okay, let I would appreciate it if you would read it in that case. Lisa. Okay, um, <clears throat> meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws chapter 30A section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television and the <clears throat> link to join this meeting can be found in the agenda posted on the town website. Very well done, Lily. Thank you. With expression. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's call the meeting to order. And um, please, uh, let's just uh, just say your name and present. Um, Alan, present. Sean Lily. Libby, present. Lily, present. Dave Wallace, present. Ben Benson, present. Kathy, present. present. Frank Leone present. And I think we've got uh, definitely a quorum and I think we're all here. All right, very good. Um, uh, oh, let's say called the meeting the order at six, maybe 20. Um, and um, <clears throat> so uh, do you have some minutes for us, Ben? Andy Graham for Lily. Yes, I figured that was the case. Thank you. Hang on. Oh, you want me to share my screen? Hang on just a second. Sorry, my phone started ringing and I had to make them go away. <laughs> Three fifteen minutes. And let's see. Well, not the memo. <clears throat> not the agenda. Sorry, hang on a second. While you're, while you're um, pulling that up, uh, let me just say a couple of uh, words while we're opening. You know, we frequently put in this uh, um, uh, qualification about the fact that uh, if some things are not up, uh, are, don't come to our attention within the last 48 hours so that we may have new business. And there are um, a few things that, we will be looking at today. Uh, and I think one of them you're pretty much familiar with, which is that the uh, Frontier uh, submitted a proposal two and a half weeks uh, late without any prior notification that they would be submitting. And um, <clears throat> we've recent, uh, we, as, as of about uh, two hours ago, as far as when I could see my, uh, get to my email, We've had a request from the select board to entertain uh, a consideration of accepting that proposal as a late as a late proposal. And I think you all know and saw my letter. I think I sent it around to everybody um, about the fact that uh, um, I had uh, declined it as as a chair um, based on the on the pretty firm deadline, very firm deadline that. This committee's always held to. So we're, we're going to come back to that, and we also have to make a couple of approve a couple of motions again for uh, the proposals that are coming up, and also for the uh, set asides. So um, I don't know if people want to. Do we have any guests here tonight? So, we do. We have several. No. We do. We have several. Um, Sorry, Alan. We have several guests. We do. We do, yes. Um, but why don't we go right, so we'll, minutes and then we can add the guests and deal with that. Okay. Can you? Can everybody see the minutes up on my screen? 
Okay. Yes. So. So I do have a question here about the IC plan, Ben. Um, that's that's all typo. Um, I would say awaiting the decision of the plan would make sense to me. Yeah. Sounds good. So just change the whole thing to see. It stopped awaiting the decision, awaiting decision. Just change ICY to the words of the. You got yeah. it. Thank you. Is that, is that okay with everyone else? Uh, sure, yeah. Looks That's mostly me. me on an iPad. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> hey listen, me. it happens to all of us. I think I do something about that. Um, yeah, okay. to be approved. There we go. So far, I'm okay. So there was clearly there was conversation about the building. Yeah, this was a pretty complicated uh, was, process yeah. last meeting. Do you have an accent on this E? That's very exciting. Yeah, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a keystroke involved, but it's not mine. It's the computer's. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, we've got the approval for tabling. Okay. All right. Quick question. Is it accurate um, to describe what follows the heading new business not anticipated 48 hours ahead of the meeting? Is that an accurate heading? I mean, we had on the agenda that we were going to consider applications. It seems to me yeah. that these are two applications that, that we received. I think in at least one case, we didn't know we had the application, but it was timely. Right. How about so if you put, I just don't know if that heading is accurate. How about if you put parentheses around not anticipated 48 hours ahead of the meeting? Well, Would I'm just not sure that it wasn't anticipated. Yeah, anticipated. I, I, I think everybody kind of had a heads up that we had these proposals that were submitted on paper, which um, um, did get to, to us through the uh, mail and town hall, but uh, we were not uh, aware of them in time to do much about them in the previous meeting. However, they did qualify and met. So I, I, I would say you're right, Dave, that that, um, that about uh, just application really didn't constitute new business. It was right, um, some, some fresh looks at the proposals, but uh, yeah, really, no, I, that was the agenda for the meeting. Yeah. You okay yeah, with that, cool. Ben? No, I'm, I'm, when you say it wasn't anticipated, that indicates it wasn't something that was on the agenda, but it was on the agenda. No, that's good. I, I like it. I like it fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I move that we accept the minutes as amended. Second. Do I have a second? No second. No, Alan, it was seconded. Are you having a hard time hearing, oh. Alan? I, I am. Let me turn up my. Uh... You're kind of cutting out a little bit too. But anyway, you have a second. So. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, raise your hands. Opposed. Extensions. Motion carries, and uh, we're approved. All right. Um. Can people mute themselves if they're not on the committee, please? Because there's some yeah. committee please. some sound, background sounds. Sorry, Carolyn, Carolyn, can you can you mute yourself? Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I'll mute you. Then. Uh, not at my house. I'll mute. Okay, I'll mute thanks. You.
hopefully I'll be able to unmute her as well. Okay, but anyway, Carolyn, that Carolyn, uh, who else do we have? So um, we have Kevin Brennan, Darius Modesto, Fire Tablet, also known as Carolyn Ness. Karen I, didn't get second, I didn't get the second person, but. Um, Darius Modesto, did you hear no, that? No, the one before. Oh, Kevin Brennan. Kevin now Brennan. I see it, yes. Can you see it? Okay. Karen Dodge and company. <laughs> Jack Soper. Thank you. And Julie Chalfant. All right. Well, welcome uh, guests. Um, it seems to me that um, I have a gut feeling that these people are all are here for the same agenda item, uh, which is not on the agenda, but we anticipated that this would be uh, coming. If there's no objection uh, sort of to uh, respect their time and uh, not have them sitting around for the rest of the meeting, I would uh, suggest that maybe we move to the discussion about the application for the tennis courts and um, and then we uh, proceed with the proposals and the motions that are necessary uh, for the town meeting and, and the town meeting warrant. So are this would any... be new business, not anticipated 48 hours. Yes, this is the- so I, I move that we address new business, not anticipated 48 hours first. <laughs> you All like right. that phrase? Keep it in, just move it around. <laughs> so, uh, uh, exactly. We probably need a second. Kathy just did it. And uh, all those in favor? Opposed? All right. Um, accepted then. Um, so uh, I think everybody on the committee is familiar with the background. Uh, I'll just quickly summarize that uh, we did receive, for those of you who may have uh, signed on late. Uh, we did receive a, prop a proposal from uh, Superintendent Modesto uh, uh, two and a half weeks late from the deadline and requesting funding, which is going to be also um, participated in with the other uh, frontier regional towns for the uh, kind of a major renovation on the tennis courts. I think the request, I, don't, I mean, the proposal, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's uh, 14,000 and maybe some change. And um, I followed the protocol we have used in the past um, and knew we didn't have a time to meet until uh, this, this meeting tonight and uh, sent Superintendent Modesto a, a letter saying that I would recommend that um, <clears throat> he consider submitting at a at a future date and opportunity, and that um, that we would, you know, we don't have a practice of accepting late pro late proposals. In fact, to my knowledge, we've never submit uh, accepted a late uh, proposal, and I've been on the committee uh, since its beginning. Actually, uh, the second year, two thousand and eleven, I believe. So, um, with that, um, if, uh, any committee members want to make a comment. Uh, I'm happy to uh, entertain those comments and then we'll move on to the guests. Well, I'll just note that it was my understanding based on your letter, Alan, that the application had been rejected and um, I understood the reasoning. Um, I haven't reviewed the application um, as a result. I, you know, I have no information. I, it's to rework the tennis courts and you know, conceptually, that sounds like a good idea, but, you know, I guess I'll just say up front, I haven't reviewed the proposal. I can't vote in favor of it tonight. Um, yeah. That okay. reason, um, which, you know, I feel kind of bad about because it sounds like a good idea, uh, but that's yeah, my Yeah, it had nothing to do with the idea. Um, we've, we've had some cases where, um, in the past, where uh, we've, uh, 
just out of respect, people have said we're, we're working on a proposal. We anticipate um, submitting it at the last minute. And um, we've really tried always to work with applicants. And uh, on one occasion, we even did have a pretty bare bones proposal that met the due date. And we worked with that uh, applicant to uh, get it into shape so that it was available for this, the equivalent of this meeting where we could vote on it. Um, um, so um, <clears throat> I was just operating on standard procedure and, and I think that, um, uh, yes, absolutely, were this to be voted on to go forward tonight, then we would obviously have to have an additional meeting and, uh, and get it on to the uh, town warrant. I was told by Casey that the town warrant is closed, but I'm guessing that there's always some latitude in that um, because uh, thing, things tend to run late. Um, others? Kathy? So is I understand that it's precedent we haven't done this, but is there a hard rule that we can't consider a late proposal? Um, that's why that's why um, <laughs> I was frantically uh, checking in with Lily just before the meeting because I did not I, there there was no time to get on the website and look at the actual town bylaw mm -hmm. that um, refers to this. Um, so I I know that um, so I said as I said I came on the second year we were we were not flexible about due dates and usually when you make application to a uh, a, whether it's a town or the federal government or whoever it is, those dates are are firm, and um, so there may be something vague or or there's certainly not not a statement that says we will consider late proposals. I know that uh, sure. for sure, but um, there may be the, the absence of something saying that uh, there there will uh, be, be no acceptance of late proposals. It's kind of a given though for. Certainly, in my experience, with uh, you know proposals to civic or municipal or public or state or federal or wherever, um, and a lot of private uh, foundations and so on as well. But be that as it is, uh, or may um, I hear you? We can uh, discuss that further. Do you have Do you have something else to follow up with? Yeah, I just think that. Um... I mean, I can see, I'm not a bi, I am a biased person, first of all, because I use those courts to uh -huh. play, uh, play pickle. Sure. And they are in terrible shape, terrible. And, yes, uh, I know that. A lot of people in town, not just students, use those courts. Um, and, uh, you know, our purpose is to provide funding to help with open space and recreation. And if there are no other proposals for that money this year, I would hope we at least look at it and have more of a discussion about it. I, I agree that this is, you know, you set a precedent and could get in trouble and that may be a problem, but. Yeah, uh, you, you brought up a good point there. Um, in fact, the of money available in open space and recreation for this year, that's earmarked for open space and recreation is only $24,000. So we're not quite even half of what the request is. So that would be another issue for the selectman, uh, select board, I'm sorry, select board to um, uh, consider because they have also submitted a proposal that we tabled in the last meeting. And, um, and were it to come up, uh, now or in a delayed uh, consideration of the, uh, I, I understand our meeting may be postponed to a later, uh, our town meeting may be postponed to a later date. Um, this would be something where uh, they would have to release the, the uh, funds that they requested from, uh, for their proposal on the 1888 building. So I, I believe what you're saying, Alan, is that um, the select board is requesting more money 
than is available in this application. And they have already requested all the unassigned monies. Yeah. So the select board, I would say, needs to decide. I mean, and I don't know where that happens. Does that happen here in a modification of the 1888 application in conjunction with this? Or does that happen at town meeting? That Because will town meeting have to vote down this whole thing if um, they vote for the 1888 first? I mean, we've never had the problem before where we have two projects who, um, let's ignore the deadline, but are equally valid assuming we get to review the application and all that kind of stuff and assuming they're equally valid and they're in competition for the same pot of funds. Explaining that at town meeting will be A, fun, not, um, but B, I mean, the select board is asking for both of them. And I think, Julie, am I correct? The finance committee has actually submitted supporting letters for both as well. Is Julie here? Julie's here. I she am. For, um, we we submitted a letter for the original um, request for the 1888 building, but we haven't um, submitted anything for the updated one. And we did submit a letter requesting that you consider this um, the tennis court thing. When, when did that come in, Julie? This morning. <laughs> we just had the meeting last night, so we wrote a, a letter this morning. Did, and did you send it to me? Did you say I did. Anything? Yep. I only had like I only had a couple of y'all's email addresses. So I sent it to the ones I had and then asked, requested that you forward it to the rest of the committee because I didn't have everybody's email address. Well, as a, as of four o'clock this afternoon, I checked all my emails, including my dear field life and my uh, personal email, and I don't have a, a letter from you, but that's it. all right. I, I mean, you know, if you send it, we'll, we'll, did, did, uh, and uh, Pat Kroll, or I don't know if you sent one to the town administrator, Casey. Um, I sent it, it it's a underscore Swedlin at comcast.net is the email I had. It is my address. And I sent it to yep. Frank Leone and Lily Dwight because I had y'all's email addresses, copy Casey Warren. Yeah, you sent it to my senior housing one, of which I have a plethora of emails. Yeah. Like, well, we're, we're, okay, so, so you, you you did, and and maybe I missed it. I get a, a lot of email, as I'm sure you do too, and I may have mm -hmm. missed it. So we, we certainly won't, uh, I mean, there's no uh, reason to not uh, accept that letter. Um, and uh, regardless of when uh, this proposal um, goes forward. Would you, All right, uh, would you like me to bring that letter up though, since everybody didn't get it and we could give everybody a chance to read it? Um, let's, let's I, I, I'm trusting that support letters are generally supportive. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> right. Unless there's some specific qualification for why this couldn't be submitted on time or something like that mitigating circumstances or something. Um, I think we can just assume that we've got some le uh, letters of support from the select board and from, and I, I did get the letter from Casey from the select board and also one from uh, from Julie. Um, so Carolyn has raised a hand, but I think we're still just doing committee talk right now, right? Uh, well, we should at least uh, ask if there are any other comments from any of the committee. I know that an opportunity to <clears throat> would allow it. Um, Darius, superintendent. I, I I didn't quite get that, but I I I heard the yeah, your name. Yes, you were asking to. Could I comment on the application process and the, what was what happened behind the scenes? Yeah, you're not coming through very clearly for me. Is that true for others? Yeah, it's not clear. I'm wondering if you can type it into the comments or the chat so that we could, you know, have a record of it because it's the audio is bad. Maybe you could improve your audio.
Okay, so Darius is going to try calling in. That that makes sense. See if that, okay. that better. I will I will admit you, Car Darius. Carolyn, will you uh, defer to Darius? Is Carolyn still muted? Oh, so I've now added. Okay. Uh, there she goes. Um, I'm sorry. This is a birthday party for my husband. Um, the, the reason it, we were not here who was submitting the application. We were aware of the application. The application was filled out. And um, so we felt really bad. It's, it was not Darius's fault. It was the select board's fault. We did not realize that we were supposed to submit it. We talked about it in a public meeting um, a month before the application was due, and we we just didn't follow through. So it was our fault and um, not the school's fault. We didn't realize that we were responsible to you know submit it. We thought and it was going to be submitted. That? You know, so so you, there, uh, Caroline, could 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 you? Clarify that you, in fact, the select board was planning to submit it. Well, we we didn't realize that we were supposed to submit it. It went to the four towns. The other three towns have it on uh, doing a, because it's a renovation or complete rehab. It's not just repair. What is going on? The other three towns CPC um, recommended recommended actions for the other three towns. So we didn't realize that it was our responsibility to send it forward. So um, it was the select's fault. We talked about it, we supported it, and uh, it wasn't the school's fault. It was just miscommunication. Okay. Uh, it, it, right. it was discussed yeah. and supported um, in the time. It just no one realized that we didn't send it in. Darius yeah. not realized well, it, the select board did not send it in. It would have been great to um, have had some heads up that it was coming. Yeah, did, do you know the date of the meeting in which the select board discussed it and decided? No, but I can I can get back to you on that. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, it was it was a well over. No. Okay. It was well over a month before our, um, you know, before the appli application deadline. I'm sure it was some because we were talking about it from a budgetary point of view. Ju Julie has her hand up. Maybe she remembers because we had um, joint meetings with the finance committee. Thanks. Thanks for checking in, Carolyn, and enjoy the birthday. Go away. Yes. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, is Darius ready or is Julie next? Um, Julie had her hand up. I have, Dar Darius hasn't popped in yet. Oh, hang on. So I, I can see. Might be. I think I can see the top of his head. Okay. Darius said to go on to Carolyn, which I did. So I don't know. Um, Julie had her hand up. Okay, Julie. So I, I don't know when it was discussed at the select board meeting. So I can't help at all with that. Um, I, I can tell you why the finance committee requested that y'all consider it. Um, we, we got fully through the budget last night and it, it's gonna be a very, very tough budget year. Um, and we have essentially no money available for any capital projects at all. So we've gone out and looked for other sources of funding for capital projects. Um, we're gonna request to tap into the capital stabilization fund for some other capital projects. This one is eligible, I, from my understanding, it, it's up to you guys, for CPC funding. So if you ignore the, the deadline point of view, just from the, the perspective of the budget, it would be greatly appreciated if you all would um, review the um, review the application because we're in a very tough spot um, this year. What happens if um, we we don't um, accept it? So 
I, I'm pretty sure if you don't accept it and the other three towns, and so then it, we would have to find some other way to fund it. Um, the other three towns, if they all vote for it, then it then it goes forward and gets funded. Um, and where Deerfield has to chip in their piece of it. Um, and so we would have to come up with that 48,000, whatever the dollar value is. Um, I, my guess is we would look at capital stabilization for that, um, which would further tap it. I, I don't know how much is left in that account off the top of my head. We'd have to look. Um, Either that or I, cut something I, else in the budget. Yeah, okay. I, I've been trying to think about um, other options as well um, because I, uh, as I, as I told Darius, I, I considered it a, a worthy project for application, and I do know um, how how bad the courts are, and I do know and have friends who use the courts regularly. So it's it is a service to the community large uh, at large, and also very important for the students who uh, want to be playing tennis on some decent courts. Um, I thought one possibility might be. I, I assume Carolyn probably went off, but I have have it on pretty good authority that we're going to have a special town meeting in the fall. And um, other towns do have uh, and, and or accept two cycles during a given year rather than just one. Most of them, I think, do just have one like Deerfield does. But um, I would certainly be amenable to um, uh, with the select board's uh, nod that we would anticipate that this proposal would come up for the special fall town meeting as part of that business. And uh, we could consider it at that time and have all of our ducks in a row and have not, um, you know, uh, made an exception to uh, what's always been a pretty fixed uh, policy for the committee. So that's something to keep in mind. And I don't think probably given the, I don't know whether the towns all, I mean, whether uh, Frontier has construction already in line and ready to go, but my guess would be that it, uh, it may not be uh, right around the corner uh, anyway, and it wouldn't come up and be available until July for the, uh, pro you know, the proposals begin their funding in the Ju on July 1st in the new fiscal year. So uh, that's just something for us all to uh, consider all, uh, as a possible alternative as well. Um, anyone hey, else? Alan, can you hear me now? Yes, that's clear. Sorry, folks, I, I had to download the new application onto this computer, it was an update, and so it took me that long. Um, I, I just thought it might be important to consider that, so, how this was created, the, the, the request to the tennis court, is a joint committee of the school committee and the select boards of all four towns. And the whole process is to have a very transparent operation so that the, the uh, that Frontier does not, um, you know, has more transparency in what's coming and on all of our capital projects. And so in our meeting in November, we um, decided that, you know, that probably the best route would be to go after CPA funding for this project where Frontier is gonna pay two thirds out of its um, reserves to pay for this court. And one third would come from the town CPA. We sent a letter to the town administrators on November 18th, telling them that based on their FY23 assessment, what the cost will be for CPA. So I just wanna say, it wasn't like it was kind of out of the blue, like we, we did our end to communicate that. It's just some towns, immediately sent us a, uh, sent us a, either filled out or sent us the CPA form to fill out. And so it's one of those things where it's like, it's not a private group that forgot the meeting date or is trying to shove something in late. It really is a, the spirit of it was trying to work together um, to get this funding um, in the appropriate place. Meanwhile, Frontier has also said that we were not gonna do any warrants for capital funds this year. In, in lieu of you know the CPA request, so I, I just want to know that that's why there's a lot of people, including maybe the finance committee and the select board, was that there was a lot of conversations about how can we do this, um, you know, relatively small ask 
to do a full renovation of those tennis courts and adding pickleball courts to that as well um, this year. And so the timing line, I know you're trying to talk about putting it off. You know, we're moving forward because we can't, if we have to wait for the next cycle, those tennis courts aren't going to be playable. We'll probably have to lock them because they're going to become a danger. The, the cracks are, are now this wide where years past we've been patching it. So that's kind of a, a bigger picture of what's going on. So while I know you folks were in the dark, that is really multiple committees failing to communicate properly. And I think in the spirit of what the funds are supposed to be used for in the town, I am a town resident myself. Um, I, I just think that, you know, I think you should look at that. It wasn't as though we completely dropped the ball on, um, on the planning part of it. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I hear you. And uh, I think that's, uh, I, I can understand how those things happen. I, I do think, think that, you know, it's, it's just a, if the CP funding was thought about in November and, um, and three different or I don't know how many uh, parties involved ha didn't have the uh, courtesy at some point between now, then and, and March 1st to let us know that this was coming in. Um, I think that would have made some difference and we would have certainly tried to, to uh, make some accommodation to at least get a, if, if you couldn't get the full proposal in to get, uh, which it doesn't sound like that was the issue. It wasn't a matter of getting the full proposal in, but we have in the past, at least on one occasion, worked with uh, a, a late proposal that um, still still made the deadline, as I said, in, in a somewhat um, incomplete form. And this frequently happens that they come in and and uh, Deerfield has a good reputation with the state and the, with the Community Preservation uh, Coalition in Boston that we uh, we tend to get our, our proposals into, into good shape. And um, when they come before town meeting as a as a vote, uh, we're very confident that we can back up the uh, data and and the personnel and the various pieces that uh, need to be there. So um, um, thanks very much. I I hear you. Uh, it what does does sound like it was a problem that uh, where somebody wasn't watching uh, watching the timing and who was on who was who was on first and. Um, so we'll we'll work from there. Um, Alan, I'm Alan, Alan, Julie has her hand up too, by the yes, way. Yes, okay. Julie? I had to find the unmute button, sorry. Um, so I just read through the bylaw and I don't see anything in there about a deadline that's in the bylaw. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's your policy, but I don't see it in the bylaw. It wouldn't necessarily be. I, I think that's true for other bylaws too. It, it's it's a policy that's well advertised and and uh, March 1st has been the deadline pretty much since 2010 um, for the proposals coming into Deerfield. So uh, I, I hear you that you're at least you're saying that um, the bylaws aren't aren't a some a, a source of uh, support for late proposals. Um, I would early. I would just like to say something there the the CCI committee exists to avoid this exact problem where Good multiple point. committees are um, addressing things. The idea is to, you, to bring those projects forward in the CCI meeting so that everybody knows what's anticipated. And had that happened, because members of the CPC, members of the Open Space and Recreation Committee, um, members of all the committees are there. Um, so I would just, I guess, um, maybe that's something I'll bring up at CCI about we've got to remind everybody in all of their committees to show up and speak up because it would have avoided this entirely. That's that's my lecture for the evening. <laughs> okay. Don't make any rash promises, uh, Lily. Um, anybody else? Um, Dave Lawless had his hand up. Owens. Uh -huh. Well, and, and obviously we can keep discussing it, and this may come as a surprise given my comment at the beginning of the meeting, um, but in light of the extenuating circumstances that have been 
uh, identified and the um, somewhat extraordinary nature of, of the circumstances with the tennis court in light of the fact, you know, I accept the representation that there's a safety issue there. Um, I'm going to move that. Um, and, and again, I'll just say, you know, this is really coming from the municipality. It's not um, an outside entity or a private entity. And, and, and that's part of the reason why I'm going to make this motion. But I move that we accept this application late and we schedule another meeting um, to consider and vote on it. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, was that you, Kathy? Yes. I think Sean had his hand up. I'm sorry. I didn't know. So we're still well, open for discussion. We've got a first and a second, and, and now we can open it up for further discussion. Sean, did you have something? Yeah, and my discussion would really be a uh, counterpoint to David Lawless's, that it's not really a matter of the merits of the project or even why it was late. We actually have another application that came in on time for the out, uh, open space and recreation money. Um, that's asking for more than apparently we even have to give that application consideration. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, deadlines, I think it's a Pandora's box to uh, make a special consideration um, on a deadline that's been well established uh, for these funds for years. Uh, and, you know, that's my only point on this. I think the merits of the idea are valuable and good for the town. And I think it would be um, unfortunate if we missed out on funding opportunity um, because of a late bat application. But um, an even better idea might come in tomorrow <laughs> that would also say we're late, but last year um, you accepted a late application that had good merits. So we would like to continue that. So that's my point. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, uh, and just a, a quick follow up on that. Um, I don't remember. I think in the first, uh, if I didn't say it to uh, Darius in the in the uh, email letter I sent to him, I I uh, had had drafted it to say that when when a town committee or a town board or a town administration submits a late proposal and it gets accepted. You know, we have a lot of private nonprofits that are fully eligible for CPA funding, and a lot of times in many towns, uh, those those have uh, get a very significant amount of the funding for projects that are of uh, all projects have to have a community good uh, to be to be uh, seriously considered. So it just makes it I, as Sean I think is saying it makes it even more difficult when uh, a non-municipal uh, entity applies, uh, like a museum in town or another organization that uh, is very much uh, part of the town, but not a, uh, com a committee or board or uh, administration. Uh, it makes it very hard to say no to some, to, to, to propose other proposals that co come in when you say, well, uh, we have a precedent of the select board and the frontier administration uh, that uh, we waived it. So, um, you know, we ha will have to con consider those. Uh, uh, anybody else? I, I have a question for, oh, sorry, Lily. I'm sorry, but um, I did ask, um, on my drive home, as this stuff was going on, I asked if there were um, any other applications that had been accepted after deadline. But and Casey sent me an email saying there was an application for CPA funds that came in after the deadline in 2021. The Fisk property on Stillwater Road was going into APR, but the first record of an application was in May 2021. I don't think that's actually accurate. It may be the first record. I, don't but I, I think I believe that I'm. I'm. I am a hundred percent certain it was actually on time. So yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't get a chance yeah. to read it until now. 
we had the motion for that drafted uh, well well before May because yeah. it wouldn't have been brought up at town meeting. Right. And so I, I think they did come in. Um, right. Sorry. So, I just um, I, to share that. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask a question that probably pertains to both Darius and, and uh, Julie um, about the fact that the open space budget at this time only has $24,000 in it. Um, um, I'm just wondering if there's some consideration for what options you would have had for um, making up that additional amount. And if you have a way to do that, um, I think that's something to be talked about. And also to Julie, um, if there is a way to find that money between now and then, that is, uh, I, I don't, I, I, can, I think, I guess I'd like to also hear from Darius whether this project is truly shovel ready so that it would be ready in say September um, and, can, and can pretty much assure us that that would be the case versus um, the fact that it's still gonna be taking a matter of lining up uh, the contractors and various people involved in uh, doing the project. Because if it, if if there is some, some, I thought that this is going to come really to a point of actually getting the work done later, then that makes it all the more feasible for us to think about. And I speaking for, for myself, but I assume all the committee would be willing to have a second cycle uh, for some applications uh, at the, at the fall town meeting, special town meeting. So, uh, Julie or Darius, do either of you have a response? Darius, do you want to address the um, shovel readiness? You need to have the money in hand before you can contract anything, right? Or the money allocated? So, yes and no. So, we moved forward with this project because we can't if the towns don't support it then the school will find a different way to pay for it, which means we have, the problem is this is, the, the, the capital committee is looking at a series of projects that the school has to undertake, including the ones that are falling underneath the loan that the school took out um, you know, with the towns um, several years ago, but put a lot of the projects on hold when COVID hit. So basically it's all about where we pull the different funds from. And the planning at that time was the town was, was did not have a sufficient amount of money in or was projected in the fall to be um, to want to have less money coming from capital from the warrants and going after free cash from the town and directed the idea that we probably should go to CPA money because there would be funds um, likely be funds there to support this whether or not it's in already open space or in the general fund so that was the idea coming trying to work the different groups together the school can you know, assess the town on other projects, we can shift money around within the schools. Um, you know, like we're using you know, school choice money to pay for parts of this and parts for the boiler. I can shift over and then assess the town next year for the boiler. Um, it won't be allowed to be used something like, you know, CPA money. And, you know, as a town resident, you know, I'm not really sure different CPA groups do different things. Some put it to the taxpayer and they say, listen, this is your money. We only approve that this meets the qualifications for a CPA, and you let the people at town meeting decide if they agree. You know, the fact that, so kind of backing off, we are already moving forward on this plan. And if I have to use other school monies to do it, the bill is just going to come in a different way back to the town. Because there's only so many much money for, for all three projects. The bill, is it billing ready? We've already went out to bid and we have a final bid selection. We're in the process of doing that right now. Um, it came in just over 300,000. Um, and so, you know, the school will be picking up the, the difference over that hundred thousand. So we'll be paying 200,000 and change, um, to get that project done, um, be completed by, I think the end date is, I think the end of August, um, the, you know, the, the heavy contracting work had to get done before school starts. And then we are allowed for, um, you know, line painting and that stuff that go through the month of September. So that's the time frame. We're ready to award the project. So. Now I'm more than shovel ready, it's it's shoveling ground. So, and that's unfair, I know, also to ask the committee in that way, and we wouldn't be in this um, 
I think everybody would be communicated that that was how things were kind of running a lot earlier. Um, you know, had we communicated that more clearly in the beginning. And, you know, talking about timelines, I work in a profession where, you know, in, in my role, I look at exceptions all day long. You know, what is this from employment things to HR things to, you know, what, what makes sense for the town? Thank you. Good. And uh, Julie, did you have anything additional to add? Not really. Um, so um, if the CPC decides not to view the application, um, then we'll just we'll have to find other sources of funding to cover it. Um, and I, I, I imagine we'll either be cutting something else from the budget or um, dipping further into our reserves than we already are. Um, I yeah. personally think that CPA funding would be the right choice um, should you all decide that you can review the application. Um, and what about the um, what about the amount that's available actually in open space and recreation and the select you you have kind of captured the uh, the rest at least uh, on a on a hold. So. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they might well release that for this project, but um, I have an opinion, um, but I'm like, I'm not on the select board. So. Sorry, what? In, in my opinion, this this is a this is a, a request that is there. That's a project that can be done right now. Um, it can be done using CPA funds if you um, use some of that general unrestricted funding for it. Um, even though yeah. this project would, is I think. so yeah so that funding would then not be available for the 1888 building but um that this project is um farther along in the process right is it's defined and the price is known and though you know the work is is definitely going to go forward assuming that town meeting votes it the 1888 building i my understanding is that's not going to be voted this town meeting. It'll be in the fall or um, next year. Um, in the yeah, overall, yeah, and, and if you compare the total, like the total cost of the 1888 building, if you use the, what, what did you say, 24 is available in the yeah, open yeah. space, which leaves 24, $24,000 compared to the I don't know what twelve million or whatever it is, eleven million for the eighteen eighty eight building is. Well, you're not coming to the CPA for you know, no, anything close. To it, but so um, gonna, yeah, so all right. I um, I, do have, I have a question, and this is about robbing Peter to pay Paul, maybe. But um, mm -hmm. is there? Is there a project on the school's budget, another one, that would be eligible for CPA funding that of about $50,000 that we could get a submitted timely application for and you could borrow again, take that money and apply it to this instead for now so that you ultimately use CPA money and we get to dodge the whole deadline thing and you still it is robbing peter to pay paul but is is that something in the plans that could work i i really don't see any that can be done um the reason why this one works so perfectly is that the tennis courts are and especially for deerfield um used by the residents of deerfield for general recreation outside of school time so that kind of fits perfectly um you know the only other thing I could think of would have been the track at some point or the payment on the track. Um, and I don't know what, you know, the different towns are dealing with that, um, having debates whether or not, some towns are talking about using CPA money to pay their debt portion of the track. Um, and there's debate whether or not, um, you know, they should be doing that. So, I mean, that's what the other three towns are talking about as well. So something like that could be done, but it's still, that's already the debt that you're included. So that really doesn't work, doesn't take anything off the bill here. The other projects are the roof, the boiler, you know, it's really big, ugly, the parking lot, 
big ugly projects that um, <laughs> don't don't fit into the the nice things that the CPA money does. <clears throat> Thank you. It was Thanks. worth a shot. <laughs> All right. Um, do you, uh, we have any further discussion uh, before we take a vote on the motion? I honestly have to just say I am totally torn by this because I believe that the project is really worthy. But for the sake of the committee, and those who come after us at the position it puts them in, that is, I'm much more worried about that than I am on the, the value of the project, even though I haven't had a chance to read the application. Um, I, uh, that, that's I, where, I, that's, I, I, and I, so I have no idea how I want to vote. There's no question that uh, it's a worthy project. It's an eligible project. I even did, went back and did some research because um, we had this come up with this, this same tennis court in the past, uh, uh, this tennis courts, because um, there was a, a, a fine line between what was going to be done, which was in some level, some level could be called routine maintenance. And uh, routine maintenance is not eligible for CPA funding. Um, and we split some hairs on the definitions in the uh, Community, Community Preservation Act and said, no, this was more substantial. And um, we actually talked to Frontier at that time about the need for maintenance so that it doesn't fall into disrepair again, because it was not an inexpensive project. But, um, but it, but it, um, and this is even a surely a more sub substantial project, but we felt that it was a not only important and desirable, but that we we it, we could fit it into the criteria for for the for the uh, funding, and we're happy about doing that. So, yeah, it's this is a a, a real tough one for me. I, I think you can all gather that, and um, but uh, certainly doesn't have to do with the value of the project of the town. And um, I was hoping that it would be possible to move this into a real short cycle here um, and even maybe provide some assurances that the, the proposal could be um, considered uh, with a very um, high probability. And of course, as you all know, it still depends on the vote at town meeting, but I can't imagine this not being a well-received uh, project at town meeting. Anything else? Did you raise your hand, Kathy? No, okay. Um, so if that's the case, uh, we'll bring this matter to a vote. Um, all those in favor, uh, let's identify you by name and, and uh, your- Can you repeat uh, the, or can Ben repeat the motion? Uh, this is David's motion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He moved that we accept the application and meet again to consider it. Kathy seconded. Does that sound right? right? Uh, yes, that was my intent. All right. So um, please, all those in favor and uh, just stay. State your name and if you are a yes. First name is fine. David Lawless, yes. Frank Leone, yes. Um, Sean? Sean Libby, no. Um, so uh, do we have, uh, we have just two yeses? Ben Benson, yes. Uh, Sean, Sean's uh, no, uh, Lily. Uh, uh, does, can you register me as an ARG? <laughs> well, you can, you can always abstain. 
I know, but I don't, I don't in a way believe in abstaining. I think you need to, I'm going to, I'm going to vote no. And uh, with some real um, emotional uh, uh, thoughts about this, I, I will also vote uh, no. And uh, so I think Kathy is the decider. That's great. Um, <laughs> because I'm with you, Lily. I'm like sitting here, yes, no, yes, no. And you're, you're freezing up. Oh, how's it now? It, yeah. Okay. You said a yes. I, I, you know, just I think that the select board screwed up, and so I'm going to vote yes. All right. So by a very narrow milk margin, we've got four yeses and three noes, and uh, we'll uh, be having a meeting which we will schedule after. We are uh, complete at the end of this meeting. And um, so congratulations to you all who uh, managed to pull this through. And um, as uh, Lily said, I think uh, there's some inevitable repercussions, um, but um, so be it. All right. Um, I think we can move on now to our... Uh, uh, well, the other should, we, um, should we schedule the meeting because um, these folks should probably be there to represent the application. If we're going to do the real application process, we got to, you know, put them through the same ringer we put everybody else through. A, uh, a kind true. and gentle ringer, but a ringer nonetheless. So um, um, this has got to make it to the town warrant now. And I think we should defer to Casey about how, well, Let's set a meeting and then we'll have to see whether it's going to be in time for the for the warrant. Because the more the warrant we were told was going to be closed, I think it was yesterday. But I know some things are placeholders in there. So um, that suggests that certainly you the wording that's going to be in for a placeholder uh, um, is appropriate. And I think we've also got to hear from the select board whether or not they are going to release the, the funding beyond what we have in open space and recreation. So we'll need a formal, I mean, at least something coming through for, for that before we actually set the number. Do it, All right. How does like Monday the third look? That's Monday. I, it seems to me like we, for the sake of everything we wanna do this quickly and i know that like next wednesday is passover i have a planning board meeting that night oh monday okay. which is, i have to be at that so. well you know that at least it's approved so um unless you had some particular you know so this is really to hash out the details um, mm -hmm. at this point I will yeah, send Kathy's, you. Really, Kathy's really good at that. So <laughs> I don't mind if you do it without me. I mean, you got to do it. You got to do it. That's fine. I just want you to know I won't be there. I could do Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday next week. Wednesday works for me. I think I have a meeting. Oh, no, but that's going to be in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I could do Wednesday or Thursday. The Wednesday the 5th? Is that what everybody's nodding about? Does that work for you, Darius, too? I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be the one who's going to be uh, representing. Yeah, the 5th does work for me as well. All right, let's grab it. 615. 615. Okay. On the 5th. And I will um get that uh, did I did I I didn't send the proposal around to to you all. 
No, but Darius um, gave me the link and I will I will just put it right into the drive and send everybody the link to it. How about that? That should Perfect. I'll Perfect. put the letters from Casey and um, Julie in there too. Can you just check to make sure it works? I don't want to be oh. one of those where someone does have access, that kind of thing. To download it, yeah. Oh, Darius. Um, it works, I checked it. Well, it doesn't, you have to request edit access to download. So I, because it needs to go into our drive. Um, so. But the address that he put in the chat does work because I just pulled it up. Through that, but is it work? So what, that's Darius's drive. We need to put it into our drive. Your and copy, so yeah. in order to do that, I need to see yeah. if I can download it. Let's just see. Um, We'll just put it in a Word doc and permission granted. Okay, you're good, Darius. That'll work. He says there's a select board meeting that night. I don't know if that matters so, to us. Just FYI. I'm sorry, I, Kathy, I didn't actually hear you, so. I said Julie uh, noted in the chat that uh, that meeting, that a select board has a meeting that same night. If that makes any difference, I don't know if it does, but. Um, well, I suppose the funding decision, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that that's their next meeting. So I would assume that that's the meeting where they would um, tell tell us that they're going to release the additional funds so that we can get the full 49 plus 49. right whatever so <laughs> all right bye karen <laughs> i'm making a note Lily, let's let's get, touch base together on this. But I'm I'm making a note to send a memo to the select board. I mean, sending some uh, email to Casey uh, regarding the funding. Okay, it'll be in Ben's minutes anyway. Uh, I'm putting it in. I'm trying to figure out how to word it right. Yeah, just that uh, we we agreed that uh, we will contact the select board before their meeting on. Um, we just wrote it down here um, on when, on next Wednesday to uh, agree that they will. Um, I don't know. I guess it'd be release release the call on the jet on the unencumbered funds to. Provide the full fifty thousand. Right. And if they, if they don't, is, does that mean we don't make our? No, we can still make our recommendation for the twenty-four thousand. Okay. Yeah, I think it's that we just need to explain to them that there's a collision of interest, that they have expressed a collision of interest, and we need clarification from them on their preference, which I'm sure we'll get. All right. Okay. So, so I just wanted to say that um, Darius, I did successfully download the application, so I will put it in the drive with the letter from the select board that we got from Casey and the letter from Julie that we got, yeah. too, and I will um, share the link with everybody. Very good. Okay. All right, so then anyone who uh, needs to leave while we finish our conduct conducting all the rest of our business, then you're free to do so, and thanks for coming to the meeting and making your case in fairly strong terms, I would say. All right, um, the next, uh, the next um, thing is to review the applications. And 
we have some update information on that so that we had the request for 20,000 for the open space and recreation funds, which was, uh, wound up being a good proposal and was uh, certainly one that I would have recommended to go forward. However, um, Greenfield did not pass their $20,000 for Greenfield to do this. This is in regard to that feasibility plan for the bikeway from down five and 10 and and coming off fighting right after the bridge and getting going into Old Deerfield and so on. So uh, um, Emily and I talked about it and she um, felt that without that uh, in place, that um, we, you know, we, we should poss possibly just maybe withhold this proposal until we take a shot at it again next year. And I agreed with her that that made sense because she couldn't take it on I didn't expect our committee to be able to take it on, um, on you know, as of July 1st. I'm sorry, not this committee, but the Open Space and Recreation Committee, of which I also chair. <laughs> and uh, and so we are so we we agreed, even though we'd already written, drafted a letter of support, the Open Space and Recreation Committee, that we would withdraw the proposal. So that does leave a full 24,000 available for the tennis courts, and. Um, um, so, uh, that, so then, and then we, we tabled the, um, select board's proposal for the 1888 building, which just leaves us with the two, uh, remaining ones, which is the, the affordable housing proposal for senior housing and the $700 for the PVMA library to do some document preservation. I think that one is, uh, uh, we may need maybe a little discussion and follow up with Lily to see where we are with that. But I think if there's um, no obje objection, I would entertain a motion right now to approve the PVMA library uh, funding. I so move. I second, second. Oh, or third. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, any opposed? Very good. It passes for a recommendation, and we'll get going on um, letting people know that that can that will be a motion at uh, town uh, town meeting, and uh, get going on the warrant. So then that leaves us with uh, Lily's. Uh, also, just I mean, this is typical for those of you who are new on on the board. It's typical for a proposal to come in that gets tweaked, and sometimes it's because of new findings. Sometimes it's because they are don't meet the standards that we feel are necessary to protect ourselves. Um, you know, we've we've got uh, one funded proposal right now that uh, fortunately I don't think there's any issue with uh, there being a, a coming back to to uh, be a criticism of us, but but uh, we we sometimes uh, in in these towns and with these proposals get funding and then for some reason or another, the project kind of falls through or or uh, the, the funds are completely inadequate or all these other kinds of things. But so far, our, I think our track record is pretty good and we wanna keep it that way, but it's very typical for things like Lily is doing with this proposal is that thing, it, new opportunities come up, the funding is there, um, you, you you do this or you do that and you make it make it uh, top notch and have it ready to go and vote in town meeting. So, Lily. So oh, I I have a question. I was thinking about this. Um, can we go into like executive session so that I can share real details that really shouldn't be made public yet in order to not jeopardize the project, or should I just speak in generalities and? What I mean, I see no. I see no reason why. Uh, I don't. I've never. I don't know if there's a precedent for that. <laughs> but I. I hear what you're saying. What do people think? It's not on the agenda. I mean, going into executive session on something that's not on when it's not on the agenda is pretty radioactive. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. I All right. You. Thank you. Um, okay. So, so let's keep it uh, vague. Okay. So. Um, uh, I amended the application 
accordingly. And I believe I sent everybody the link to, um, to expand to the full amount that was set aside for senior housing because we have approached the property owner and the property that we are talking about um, is adjacent or have approximate to the existing municipal campus and it involves more than one structure when we first were approaching them we wanted to peel off one structure and a large piece of the property and i looked at the assessor's maps and came up with the 420,000 which seemed to be um I thought ample for what we were asking. The property owner is amenable to a sale, but wants both structures to be a part of it. Um, the town is can only pay uh, the um you know, you get a professional assessment, not the tax assessor's value, but I think you have to get a professional assessment. And then we're limited to that amount. I suspect that the money that we're seeking from the CPA will be insufficient for that. However, in speaking with the select board, there may be additional funds available through um potentially the ARPA money because there's some concerns about a clawback happening. And so they would actually welcome the opportunity to use the funds for the sake of the town. <clears throat> so we talked about in our committee, do we just wait? Because all this stuff takes time. It always takes time. But then we realized if we have the approval for the funds and they're not sufficient, then we don't do it. If we have approval for the funds and they are sufficient, then in the fall town meeting, the town could vote to empower the select board to make the purchase because the town meeting has to vote to approve the purchase of property. So by doing this now, we will be teed up to bring it to the town for the special town meeting that always has to happen in the fall. That's why we're asking now. And my expectation is that should negotiations with a landowner take much longer, that what we will do is come back next year. We won't reapply for the money, but we will as as we updated in our current application about what happened last year, we'll bring an update to the the committee um, so that we can anticipate. And then wearing my CPC hat, so we can anticipate um, whether or not we can entertain other housing applications, or you know the likelihood. Anyway, because I don't yeah. I don't think it's fair. I don't know if anybody else is doing affordable housing, anything in the town, but um, I don't, I would not like to see us tying it up for a year with no real expectation just to have the ability to, to do it. So that's, that's our thinking. And that's why we, we upped it by, I think it's like $60,000. <laughs> it's just to push it the limit to the pot. Yeah. Okay. So it's clear that everybody that and 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 I understand. So that so what I'm hearing is this is really about just changing that number in terms of you're not um, specifying any other changes or things to the proposal. So we're really looking at the same thing. And this was already on our plate, so to speak, that that um, we were putting this money in in terms of an opportunity that could potentially come up. And it looks like it's even more likely now that that might happen. So um, if there are no objections to uh, bringing that number back up to uh, another 60,000, but at the same time is money that's already in the set aside for, for affordable and senior housing, 
that we can uh, take a vote. Can I ask a, a quick question? Yeah. Are, are you planning on divulging the location of this property to town meeting? Because I think you're going to have a real problem if you don't. Yeah. I, it is my hope that we will be far enough along in the conversation by then to do that. Um, if we're not, I absolutely agree. And we will have to figure out. Um, yeah, because because we folded it into one application and we don't want the whole application to fail. That's a so Alan, is it possible in town meeting? Let's say I'm unable to divulge the property at town yeah. meeting and people are like, forget about it. <laughs> Will we still be able to get the 86,000 to continue the site work? Can we make a can we amend it to remove that amount? in town meeting? I believe we can. I, I know we can amend, the, that motions can be amo amended and bring that to a vote and then vote the amendment. Um, and I was just trying to think if we had a precedent with, with CPA funds. And I don't, I can't come up with anything uh, that I, where I recall that we've ever done that. And we'd again, probably need to check with, uh, well, the select board, I don't think we need probably, they, we wouldn't need to go directly to town council or request or uh, direct. Well, contact. my understanding is you can always request less on, on general right. board articles. You can always That's request right. less. And if this is a sim simple warrant article. Yeah, then maybe and, and that, that, that is generally true of, of uh, um, budget, budget, categories uh, in town meetings. Yeah, so we, do, we amend we, it. We can operate on that assumption. And, um, you know, the worst case, yeah, we'll, we'll make we'll make it work, I think. And it should be. We'll just uh, keep our cr fingers crossed that it all comes to yeah. where we where we are by the, by the town meeting. So with that, uh, do we have a motion to approve this proposal? Kathy, did you? If you're talking, you're not. We're I not, said I make the motion to approve your proposal. Thank, thank you, Kathy. And a second. I would second that. Okay, and Frank second. And um, all those in favor. Um, those opposed. Any abstentions? I'm, motion. Abstain. I'm not afraid to abstain. I'm going to abstain on this one. And I think <laughs> I, I think I should abstain. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I vote for it, but I, I think I should have yeah. stayed, but it we'll doesn't matter. It we'll doesn't matter. Your attention. Okay. Thank There's you. delicate uh, space in there where, you know, not, we've really actually had a conflict of interest, uh, case in, in this committee very early on. And, um, and, uh, but what it really comes down to in terms of how the state views things is if if you're voting to approve money, which may be for a purpose that you approve on, on, of or uh, maybe even have worked on, but you have no personal financial interest, you generally it's it's safe, but it's always good to recuse yourself or to abstain just to avoid any questions from people who might want to make a thing of it. So Alan, if, I, I didn't get an accurate count on the votes. I did a count on all the members last time. Okay, so uh, we have two abstentions and one, two, three, four approves. Four approves? Yeah. It was five, wasn't five it? Five approves, correct. Five approves, okay. Yeah. You can tell it's been a tense night because I'm beginning to count myself, just like. <laughs> yeah, but Alan, that's why you make the big bucks. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Okay, very good. Uh, so we've uh, accomplished uh, a heck of a lot tonight. And um, I think that's it. We don't have any other approvals except for the final thing, which uh, is that we. Each year, it's required by the Community Preservation Act 
but this year, but each year we have to actually vote for the set asides for each of the three major categories. So the the act states that there should be each year for each annual budget or fiscal year budget a 10% set aside for historic preservation and for open space and recreation and for affordable housing. So we're gonna quickly, and then um, I'm also gonna recommend something we always do, which is to also make a motion to pass, which is almost, I think, most CPC committees in, in the towns do, which is uh, also to make a motion to set aside 5% for administrative costs, because you never know when we might have a legal issue come up or we wanna support something that just for example, uh, you know, maybe we see some progress coming along on people doing their own research on the bikeway and they come up and say, well, we'd, we'd like a few couple thousand bucks to uh, uh, get a survey done or do something. And we would have the uh, ability to use some administrative funds to support some projects that we think have merit and might uh, uh, have been proposed or come before us. So um, I'm gonna do these just very quickly. Um, is there a motion to set aside 10% for historic preservation? I so move. I second. second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passed. Is there a mo uh, motion to set aside 10% for open space and recreation? I so move. A second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and then again, uh, another motion for 10% set aside for affordable housing. I move, so. <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor, opposed, motion passes. And uh, then finally, a motion to have a 5% set aside for administrative costs and expenses. I move, I so move. Second. I second. All those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. All right. Alan, as a matter of curiosity, about how much is that 5% historically? I should um, ask earlier. <laughs> well, let's see. I can just quickly run a number here. This would be conservative, but if we said that we get had revenue of 225,000. Be like 10 k Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we, 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 I don't think we've ever spent anything. Maybe we spent a thousand dollars here or there, but what are we talking about? 25,000, so half, half of that. So, well, five. Yeah, it could help. We could do the tennis courts. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> do we have administrative money from this year that we've spent? Uh, yes, I think we do. Yeah. And would that be? So that it's a possibility because if, if it's not board, yeah can we can we as a as a committee when we meet possibly next week say that we'll take i think i think we'd have to get a league a league i mean a, a, something stronger than my opinion my guess is that we could use that for any project that we approved so um i think there's a very strong case for the fact that we could do that so that puts us up to, I think it, I think it was about fifteen thousand. So let's just say it's fifteen thousand, um, and if it's still on the books for us, then that's uh, twenty four and fifteen. So yeah, we're getting there. That takes us a long way there, and uh, I think that would be that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, good point. Good question. Uh, that's great. So, okay. So when we don't use it, it's not accumulating in the administrative pot. No, it, it rolls back, it rolls back into the fund, however, which is good. I mean, in other words, we keep the money. 
Yeah. Um, I'd personally just assume that the select board would say, of course, or capital can uh, uh, would say, yeah, we can we can top that off, uh, but because we'll get that fifteen thousand back. But um, it's you know it's up it's up to us to make, make that call. All right. All right. We have our next meeting, which is on April. Was it sixth? Fifth at six fifteen. Fifth. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if there's no other business, I think we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. aye, aye. Only one experience who, in who was the life. second? Sorry. Who seconded? I think it was Lily. Yeah, I did. Lily, you've been doing a lot of moving, moving and shaking. <laughs> I'm in a rocking chair tonight. I was I I was just going to say I, I only in one uh, experience time have I experienced the case where someone moved not to adjourn, and that was in a very boring, long <laughs> meeting. <laughs> All right. All right. So we are adjourned at seven fifty 